So I haven't uploaded for a while, and the reason is, well, uh, to put it simply, this is your brain, and this is your brain on high school. I don't really have a joke for this, so, um, cover, let's get started. <laughs> This is a basic illustration of our eye. Essentially, light comes through, gets bent by the lens or the cornea, and eventually hits the back where it is processed. Our eyes have two main types of cells to help with color processing or light processing. The first ones are rods and the second are cones. Rods are active at high level light and detect color, while cones are most active at low level light and they mainly detect just brightness. They're kind of grayscale. Now, of the cones, there are three types, red, green, and blue. And remember those three colors because they become important later. And while they aren't perfectly red, green, and blue, they are close enough to which we can call them red, green, and blue color cells. And of course, rods, there are only one main type, but they aren't important for the color lessons, so we'll focus on the cones for now. Now, one important thing to remember is that there is no reason why red, green, and blue are necessarily special in a cosmic sense. They could have been anything else if the Earth could evolve a different way. Another important thing to consider is that not everyone has the same three. It's the form of color blindness, in which you're missing one of these three colors, be it either the green, blue, or the red. It's more likely for guys to be colorblind as they carry an extra colorblindness gene, but about 1 in 200 women are colorblind as well. It's about 1 in 8 for men. This is a common test called the Ishihara test, and they basically detect if you are missing one of these three colors. And so if you can't see the number of either of these three, then you may be colorblind. This is what they actually look like to colorblind people with that specific type. And now we get on to how colors are displayed in computers. Computer light is different from most light sources. For example, lamps make light by forcing electrons through an extremely small place in which they heat up the filament. There are four main types of how computers display color. The first is RGB. This is, of course, the most common for the reason that, if you remember... Now, of the cones, there are three types, red, green, and blue. And remember those three colors because they become important later. And so, since nature gave us those three color cones, we decided that it'd be best if we gave our computers those three color cones. Now, using a combination of one of these three, you can see every other color in the visible light spectrum. This is why the color wheel is a little misleading, as it's actually more of a color spectrum. Now, RGB has some more importance we'll get into later, but for now, let's move on to HSV. Now, HSV stands for Hue, Saturation, and Value, and it's more intuitive. Computers themselves use RGB, but on the human side of things, we can use HSV as an alternative. The circle is where the color is chosen from. Now this color wheel is, at the edge, the most saturated color, and the middle, pure white. On the side is a brightness column. Now changing the hue just changes where the circle is radiating. It just rotates over the circle. Changing the saturation changes how far away from the center the circle is. And then we come to value. Now, value is just how bright the color is. Another way to explain it would be a cylinder, the color wheel on the top, but also the height determines the value. After HSV point, we get into hex. Now, hex is short for hexadecimal, and it's just another way of counting. If you've seen my video about binary up there, you should have a pretty good grasp about number systems. We have a number system of 10, the decimal system, meaning we have 10 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And when it goes over 9, it just moves one place to keep tally of how many times we've gone over 9, and puts a 1 there, and sets and loops the first digit back to 0. So then that goes all the way up to 9, then it's a 2 and then it just keeps on going. Now, of course, this is very intuitive, but what happens when you use other numbers, more or less digits? If you use binary, well, you have to do 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 
101, Now all of these number systems have their same basic values, but this is just how we show them. Hexadecimal, for instance, has 16, the hex and the decimal. They have 16 digits. Now we didn't just create some more alien digits, we instead used letters. The hexadecimal uses the letters A through F as well. So in counting it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 0, and then it keeps looping. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, A, 1, B, 1, C, 1, D, 1, E, 1, F, 2, blah, blah, blah. Now, hexadecimal uses this system. You've probably seen it before. It consists of a hashtag and then a mishmash of six numbers and letters right after. Now, here's the thing. Those numbers and letters are actually in hexadecimal, and they're just counting up. And it isn't really six, but rather three groups of two. There's the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. And this is why I kept this up here, because it again corresponds to red, green, and blue. Now this is how computers really say RGB. We take it out of 255. And so the color 171, 72, 36, using 171 as red, 72 as green, and 36 as blue would be this color with the appropriate amount of red, green, and blue. Now we choose to display the number from 0 to 255 using hexadecimal. These hexadecimal can count all the way from 0 to 255 using only two digits. How it does that is when we get to 99, we then go to 9A, 9B, 9C, 9D, 9E, 9F, and then instead of doing 100, it instead goes A0, A1, A2, A3, etc. until it finally hits its last attack, F. And so hexadecimal displays colors from 0 to 255. And so each one of these channels has the possibility of being any number from 0 to 255. That creates the possibility for 16.7 million different colors, all different levels of red, green, and blue. And pretty much any color you see on a computer screen uses hexadecimal. The one I talked about before, HSV, is just a way for humans to intuitively try and get to a color. But really, hexadecimal and RGB are how computers see it. And so finally, we come on to the last category, CMYK. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and kablack. The reason they used K instead of B for black is we already have B for blue, and so they went with K. Now CMYK is what printers use, and it's why you load your printer with cyan, magenta, and yellow ink instead of red, green, and blue. The difference is that these are additive colors, and these are what are called subtractive colors. These just add more light, while these just decrease the amount of light, because if you mix a bunch of different colors in paint, as any artist knows, they're going to eventually hit black. It just keeps subtracting the amount of color. These, on the other hand, show how light behaves in real life. Now, a couple back to the trinity that I showed you before in the video. If you mix the colors red and green, you will get yellow. If you mix the colors green and blue, you will get cyan. And if you mix the colors red and blue, you will get magenta not purple. So a good way to think about this, this is for digital and emitters of light, while this is for physical and reflectors of light. And now we come to our final category. For the color in real life, I'll focus on animals who have remarkable colors, and for the computers, I'll talk more about other ways of displaying computer color. Most animals use three light cones that are focused around the red, green, and blue. However, some birds have more towards the ultraviolet side instead of their blue. And the reason for that is because 
some parts of the bird's plumage can be better seen with ultraviolet and it can help them find a mate. So it's evolutionarily better for them to see ultraviolet. On the other hand, some snakes can see or sense infrared. Now, infrared has the special property that all things that give off heat give off infrared light. So when you see things like temperature, cup camera, they're just measuring the amount of infrared that comes off. And so snakes can just see things that are warm, or at least sense where they are. Now, the mantis shrimp is, in my opinion, one of the just best animals, objectively, for three reasons. One, they look fabulous, and they possess the entire rainbow. Now, humans have to rely on uh, other ways to make that happen. But another more relevant topic is that manta rays have not three, not four, like tetrachromats, but 16 color colors. And the reason that their brain doesn't melt handling that much information is because while well, humans perceive three large swaths of color that we have come to call red, green, and blue, mantis shrimps do more of a single spike in a given wavelength. Mantis shrimps possess all 16 of these, and there are individual little spikes. It doesn't see orange as a mixture of a lot of red and a little bit of green. It sees orange as its own color. It can see red, orange, yellow, green, a shade of cyan, blue, deep purple, violet or indigo or whatever you want to call it, lilac, lilac, maybe it's lilac, and then four more other colors in the ultraviolet region that we cannot see. The animal is insane. And another part of the mantis shrimp is that they have the tendency to, you know, snap their claws fast enough to create an underwater shockwave to kill and stun any animals and shatter aquarium glass. It's just a really cool animal. First we have grayscale, and grayscale is just simply the intensity or value of the color. It isn't how much of a red, green, or blue there is, it's just how bright or dark it is. HSL, similar to HSV, is hue, saturation, and lightness. And they're pretty similar overall. People tend to like it a little less, evidenced by um, this video. Versus HSL and what HSV is a f***ing lie. More saturated version of that without changing the value? I don't know where you f go. You gotta go like this. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know how to use this wheel, so yeah. Time to use this wheel, guys. Time to use the triangle wheel. It's the good. <coughs> so, LA LAB is a little interesting. The L just stands for light, the A for how much how red it is versus green it is, and B for how yellow it is versus blue. It's interesting and it's supposed to be more towards human vision, but it's not that widely used or known about. Finally, we come to NCS. NCS, other than being a place for old YouTubers to steal their music from, uses six colors, and it's also based on some part of the eye, the ganglion cells, but not the cone cells, and it's a little different. Now, NCS, or the natural color system, can most accurately be, be described by a sort of double-sided cone. Now, if I weren't so bad at drawing, then maybe I could have shown this to you better, but it can most accurately be described as a similar to the HSD. It has a color wheel that spans red to yellow to green to blue, and it also has a y-axis, or height, which goes from black to white. It's an interesting color system, but most used for when talking about color, or describing color. So in conclusion, color is weird, and there are a lot of ways to describe it, but stick with RGB for now. Seems nature has decided that's the best for us. Like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, thank God. Wait, one hour, 25 minutes. Not bad, not bad.